Hello everyone, welcome to William and the Magic Box. Today on our show, we are going to have Kevin. Kevin is from Nebraska in the USA. So let's see what Kevin has to say. Enjoy the interview. Hello. Good morning. Hello, good morning, Kevin. How are you? I'm good, how are you? Very well. Thanks so much for taking the, the time on Sunday morning for the interview. Thank you. No, no problem. <laughs> so tell me, um, did you do something last night? Did you go out or just had like I stay in? Um, I went out with some friends and hung out and then just came home and just relaxed and fell asleep. I see. And uh, usually, um, are you like a, a early bird or you do you like to stay longer um, at night? How is your... your um, it, ju it just depends on the day. Um, as I get older, I could easily go to bed at seven o'clock at night, but sometimes I have to stay out late or stay up since I work nights. So mm -hmm. I usually will probably just come home and just kind of like chill at home, have a couple drinks and just relax. Amazing. So as you say about that you work uh, during the night, what do you do for a living? Uh, I am a sterile processing tech at a level trauma one hospital. Tell me a little bit about your job. So in a nutshell, I deal with all instruments used for surgery. So we would receive the instruments and each surgical instrument can range from just like one piece in a set to when you get to implants, they have like 824 pieces. Wow. And so it, it's a lot of them, like when you get to the implants, you're getting to, into like the little screws and everything. So they're really, really, really tiny. Um, but we receive all that in, we have to take it all apart, make sure everything is, anything cannulated is, you know, brushed and flushed and everything. And then we pre-wash it and then we wash it. And then it gets received on the other side where it gets mated with the pan it comes in. And then we assemble it. And after that, we put it through our sterilizer but other people would know it as autoclave. So we put it through there so that way it can finish the whole sterile process. And then it gets put onto a shelf until it's needed for a case. My God, that's yeah. a really, really like interesting job. My goodness. And, um, but do you participate as well during the surgery or not? You just prepare everything um, before? Just, I'm in the background, just dealing with all the surgical sets. Um, I work underneath the OR and so they'll just send the stuff from the OR down an elevator to my department and then I take it from there. I have observed a surgery for learning purposes and I will say it's nice to see the finished product. It's nice to see all the stuff that you've been dealing with every day, how it's used in an everyday surgery. I see. Very interesting, yes. my goodness, wow. That's just made my day now, learn something new. I didn't think that, uh, you know, to, to have the surgery, you need to go through that long process until, you yes. never think about that anyway, you never think about that. You think everything is ready there for the doctor just to do with the job, you know what yeah. I mean? <laughs> right, and uh, where are you from, Kevin? Uh, I'm from North Carolina, but I currently live in Nebraska. And why Nebraska? Um, well, when I was younger, my family moved here because my mom's side's all here. My dad's side, he retired from the Marines. So we moved up here when he retired and the economy was better. And my mom's side of the family was here and he wanted snow. So we moved here. <laughs> and how long have you been living there for? Uh, I've been here since 98. Okay. It's been for a while now. Yes. <laughs> and do you go back to uh, North North Carolina or South Carolina, you said? Uh, North, North Carolina. North Carolina. Do come back and sometime? I have not been back. I was supposed to go back in 2020 for a funeral, but due to COVID restrictions, I was unable to go. I see. So all your relatives are back in North Carolina? Uh, I have some that are still there. Um, otherwise, everybody's kind of on my father's side. Everybody's kind of dispersed to other states or they've passed on. I see. Saying that, what's the biggest difference between Nebraska and North Carolina, and what's the big similarity between both states? Well, I will say 
different things. So like Nebraska, you're in the path of tornadoes. You're in tornado alleys. So you deal with tornadoes. And then North Carolina, you know, I lived by the ocean, so I dealt with hurricanes. So those are two different things, but we also would have bipolar weather in both states. I mean, Nebraska, you can have all four seasons in one day. North Carolina, you would have, I wouldn't say all four, but you would have at least two seasons. I see. Um, but it's actually fairly the same in a lot of sense of construction. There's always construction um, and there's everything's changing all the time. And how far is uh, the state between each other? I'm just I'm very familiar with the... the... Uh, so North Carolina is on the, the east coast and Nebraska is in the middle. I'm not quite sure on the mileage. I just know it's about a two day drive. Okay, all right. Yeah. Not very close. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Kathleen, are you ready to go on a beautiful journey through your memories in life and to share your point of views? I'm ready. Amazing. Welcome to William and the Magic Box. So, this is my best friend. Full of random fun questions okay i'm just gonna play a song now just for us to move a little bit before the first question okay okay let's do it right so before we start the game through the journey if there is a, a question that you don't want to talk about for some reason you don't want to answer i always can change okay okay by the way today in europe in a few uh, in canada is father's day as well in, in the u.s as well or not it's yes. father's day as well yes I see, I see. And your father is in uh, Nebraska? Um, yes, that's where he currently resides. He actually passed away in 2020. Oh, okay, sorry to hear that. Okay. No, it, it's okay. <laughs> it's all right, cool. Right, so let's go for the first question. Let's do it. First question for you is, what does success mean to you? What does success mean to me? Um, I would probably say it would mean a lot of hard work and determination and the sense of um, achievement to be successful in whatever that you're doing. And so that would be what success would mean to me. The thing that success can be um, a personal thing, do you think, or? Um, it just depends on the situation, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I think I want to believe is uh you know it's I think being success it's it's if you're happy with yourself whatever you are yeah. doing whatever you are following and uh, you know if you have this amazing feeling of, okay I'm reaching whatever I want to, what I'm doing or whatever that's yeah. for me um, the mean of success I believe next question let's do it okay Kevin next question for you is what your parents did that comfort do the most well in my case growing up was a little bit different i kind of lost touch with my father and then we kind of reconnected later on before he passed so my mom has always been there for me and even though we don't see eye to eye a lot on certain things she has always been there in the sense of if I run into any financial trouble or I need someone to talk to or whatnot, she's always there willing to listen, give her opinion and just kind of know that you're not alone in any situation. I see. And as you're saying that you didn't have too much connection with your dad. Um, so before he passed, um, during this period that you were connected with him, what's the best memory that comes to your mind? Um, well, there, the two that really come to my mind is the fact that 
he was dealing with a lot of illness and so we were in and out of hospitals and i remember one time in the hospital i pretty much had my time to where i said my piece you know i we just kind of reconnected and i i needed to get things off my chest and we were able to pretty much have that bond reconnected and i remember he had uh took his hand and squeezed my hand and that was a, a time where i knew that everything was 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 okay and then the other time would be um on one of the last few days that he was around we always like to watch movies and we were big fast and furious fans and so i remember we were watching a fast and furious movie and just for old times and it was kind of nice to kind of have that 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 little bit of time together and enjoy something that we like to do amazing very good and then um, do you have siblings as well i do i have an older brother and two older sisters big family yes <laughs> and they're all of them they live in nebraska as well uh yes or surrounding towns but we're all kind of within the same state i see very good next question before the next one i was checking your profile a little bit and i could see that uh, you have do some dogs two yes. dogs uh, i have one dog um i have past relationship i had two other dogs wow and uh, you you always had uh, this connection with dogs i would say so because growing up i had a dog and i loved her very much but she was a hunting dog so growing up we were, we didn't hunt so it was kind of hard to have a hunting dog when you know we were not into hunting or anything i see very good and how old is the dog that you have right now uh she just turned one on june 10th still a puppy yes still a puppy oh, what's her name her name is bella bella beautiful <laughs> next question for you is what is the funniest gift have you ever received oh funniest gift i've ever received uh on the funny side i really can't think of one off the top of my head but one gift i would remember would be uh that i i, I still remember from my childhood so growing up i had chicken pox and so i remember being at home on the couch and i lived in base housing at the time and we had a pastor from our church that came by just to kind of check in and i remember looking through the living room window and seeing him because he really didn't want to be too close which i understand and i remember he held up a toy car which was like a, a toy porsche and it was like green with some red on it and i remember that was my gift from him and to like get better and so i would be playing with that car non-stop <laughs> do you still have it um honestly i think i recently lost it a couple years ago <laughs> <laughs> or it got handed down to um nieces and nephews that wanted to play with it. I see. Very good. Next question. Kevin, before the next question, tell me um what do you like the most about your job and also what's the most challenging part in your opinion? Uh the best thing I like about my job is the fact that I may not be in the OR, you know, doing what a surgical tech would do because assist assisting the doctors with the sets and everything. But I do play a small role in the practice and the rehabilitation of a patient. Because without what my department does, you couldn't have a surgery and that patient couldn't have whatever type of surgery they needed to get better. And so just knowing like if you were doing a heart surgery, you have to have everything for a heart surgery there, it needs to be cleaned and sterilized, ready to go. And without us, 
they would be waiting on a heart surgery and that could be potentially fatal. So just knowing that, just knowing that I play a small role in the lives of some other people and I'm helping makes me feel good about what I do for a living. But I would say the challenging part would be <clears throat> that I find is a lot of it kind of has to do with staffing. If mm -hmm. we have enough staff to do our job, it makes it hard to fulfill the need um, because sometimes you're doing multiple positions to get the job done instead of focusing just on one. Um, or if something happens and you're not able to get that set fulfilled, you now have to track down another set that you can get assembled, cleaned and sterilized and all of that. So sometimes it's a little bit stressful but in the end, it does work out because, you know, we work like crazy to make sure that everything is good. Amazing. Very good. Yes. You're saying that you play a small part, but actually you play a big one. My goodness, for the whole thing to get together, it, you yeah. need to be there as well. Do you know what I mean? Yes. And it's very educational too, because I've learned so much over the last year and few months that I've been in that department, um, there's a lot that goes into each instrument and each surgery that I never really used to know. Absolutely. And uh, uh, your schedule is based what the, the surgeries are booked or organized or it, it would need to be there available? Um, it depends. We have a lot of people that work Monday through Fridays mm -hmm. and they range from, you know, we have three shifts. So you have your morning to afternoon, you have your afternoon to, to night, and then you have your overnight crew. Um, so it just depends. I, I work 12s and I work overnights. I and see. when I work overnight, I deal with um, a lot of what's happened during the day, along with if we have, uh, transplants those are never scheduled because you never know when a transplant is going to be available those kind of happen and, and those have lately have been happening overnight or they've been going long into the day into the overnight hours and plus if we get like any add-on cases throughout the night or any emergency stuff then you know you're right there to handle all that too and it happens a lot, like emergencies or things not expected? Um, it just depends on what's going on around the world. Mm -hmm. um, but I will say COVID cases, you know, when COVID first came around, that did put a, a big halt on a lot of surgeries because of a lot of restrictions that we've had with COVID. But as, you know, things have gotten a little bit better, restrictions have been lifted you know you can have more surgeries and things like that but i did see like around january to probably march would be like your your downtime but then it, it starts to pick back up i see all right next question for you is if you could stay any age for the rest of your life what age would that be and why I would have to say like a range from like five to 10 age range because I think it would have been fun to still stay at that age to where, you know, yes, you're in school, but you're able to, you know, be a kid, go play, not have the responsibilities of a job or, you know, the responsibilities of a household, you know, you can just enjoy life till its fullest. I think that would be kind of fun. Saying that, what's the best memories that you have as a child during that age? Uh, I would say just going on different field trips. So I was homeschooled my whole life. 
and and so were my siblings and we would go on field trips all the time and i remember going to um the battleship uss north carolina and just kind of exploring the whole ship and learning the history about it and just kind of like being more hands-on and it's not just reading it from a book mm -hmm. uh, and we would go to different lighthouses and i got to see different things like that and i think that's just something that i've always enjoyed growing up when you say homeschool um that's you literally was studying at home yes so my mother would teach us and we would have desks set up in our house so we each have our own little desk and it was awesome like we would do school we would do pe um there would be other homeschool families in the area that we would always connect with so we would do um picnics together we would um do pe together that way we can still interact with other kids but each family does their schooling at home but is that a choice of some family in the u.s or just for relate to to something else if you it, can share it is a choice and a lot of it is based on religious beliefs uh, okay and so in my case my family wanted to homeschool me and my siblings because of they did not like the way public schools would teach i see especially from the religious standpoint so they wanted us to be homeschooled so that way they can you know teach us the way they want i see and it's quite popular in the us it is very popular i see very interesting well next question let's do it I could hear some noise when you were talking. It's Bella around you. Yes. Can um, I see? She's on the floor there. Bella. 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 Hi. <laughs> oh. She's so quite big. <laughs> yes, she is. When she's on her back legs, she's actually um, head to head with me. Oh my God. And she's going to grow and more than that or not? Yes, yeah, she'll grow more. Wow. Yes. <laughs> Big dog. <laughs> uh, they typically are like around 130 pounds. Um, right now, I'd say she's probably 80 to 100. Very good. Yeah. Next question is, what are you most passionate about? Oh, what am I most passionate about? For me, it would just depend on the situation. Because I can be passionate about a lot of things. Um, but right now, I think I would be passionate about my future and different things I would like to accomplish. And so I, I have to have that passion to work towards it because if I don't have that passion for it, then it's just going to be something in the far distance that I'm never going to get to. We are living the moment. Yes. Amazing. Good one. Ready for another question? Yes. Let's do it. Next question. Okay, Kevin, next question for you is, describe yourself in three words. Loving. Uh, energetic. and blunt 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 which means which means i'm very blunt and i don't like sugarcoat things i just call it as i see it i see how about a negative one if you could define yourself in one negative word persistent that's um, positive that's positive for me that's positive for you <laughs> oh my god um, persistent yeah well how's, how's this this that's a it's a 50 50 for me it, it wins in my favor sometimes okay. but so i i will say that that'll be on both sides of the spectrum but i would say i overthink a lot of the time 
So that's very negative because it has gotten me in a position at work to where if I overthink something, then I start to be negative about myself and yes. kind of like second guess everything. And that's something that you don't need to have. You got to have that positive attitude at work and come up with different solutions instead of overthinking. I totally agree with you. And uh, if you do ask me if I could change something about myself or in myself, I would say that overthinker. Now I'm getting older now, I kind of try, I, I know more or less how to deal with that. Yes. But, oh my God, I remember in the past, I spent so much energy, like it drained me. I remember drained me, like thinking about overthinking about things and alive things. And it was like pointless because, you know, it's not up to you sometimes and it makes you tired, makes you, yeah. as you said, you can you can get yourself in a negative mood or in a, you know what I mean? You don't think straight, straight when you are overthinking about something. I think you they would always, get, sorry? You always have to go with your gut. Yeah, yes. And sometimes you go like, my goodness. And I remember even though afterwards I was realized that I was in, in that you know what I mean? Mindset of overthinking. I was like, my goodness, what's the point? And I, I realized straight away it was it was uh, pointless. But I caught myself so many times, like just overthinking. Nowadays, I can control, let's say, more. But it's always there. When you have this way, the personality, it's it's always going to be there. You just need to, to manage how to not take over your energy of your because yeah. you get drained, you get tired. Um, yeah, the older you get, the most easy to deal with the situation. Yes. Cool. Next question. Kevin, this month uh, we are celebrating the uh, Pride Month, yeah? Uh -huh. For you, um, being a gay guy, did you always have the support of your family? Walk me through uh, your childhood, being a gay boy, did you come out or...? Well, I grew up in a Southern Baptist Pentecostal military family. So living in North Carolina, which is a Bible Belt state, it's very frowned upon to be gay. And growing up, I remember I knew from a very young age before I even knew what certain things were. But growing up, realizing that you're different and you just didn't know how. And then things are starting to piece together when you are out and about and you're with other boys and you just, you just have a sense of something's different and you're, you just don't, you don't feel like you connect really well with them because you feel like something's missing. Mm -hmm. And I remember, you know, having girlfriends in the past, um, but I just never felt complete. I felt like I was putting on a persona and trying to live a normal life because it was what was accepting. Um, and then I came out in 2008 and a lot of my close friends were like, it's about time you came out. And I'm like, what, you already knew? I'm like, yeah, we could easily tell. I'm like, oh, okay, thank you. But it was a sense of relief. It felt like a, a weight's been lifted off my shoulders because I'm like, finally, I can be myself out and about. But it was really hard with family. Um, some of my families on the strict side where, you know, their religious beliefs are, you know, you're not allowed to be gay. You can know you, a man and a woman, um, you know, you got to have that relationship with God. But then my other side of the family is more kind of new age and just don't really care as long as I'm, you know, happy and healthy. And so it's just, it, it takes a while to, for people to get used to. Um, and now it's to the point where my family is, I would say loving and tolerable. Mm -hmm. But I wouldn't say like they would go out of their way and say, oh my gosh, this is a picture of my gay son. Isn't he so cute? Like they wouldn't go out of their way and do that, but they're not going to shun me, but they're not going to like parade my gayness around. 
makes sense. You know, parents, they, do, they don't go like, okay, this is my straight kids. You know what I mean? They don't go like, oh, this is my gay kids. So it's like, you know what I mean? They just accept you, uh, you know, and life goes on. I mean, being gay is not like uh, uh, the same, like, go like, oh, I'm straight. Oh, this is it's just a way of approaching. Um, who in your family was the first person you came out? I want to say my sister. We're like three years apart. Okay. And so I've, I've always felt closer to her. Good. Very good. Next question for you is, if you could make up a school subject, what that would be? I, it would be called Common Sense 101. <laughs> <laughs> Because I personally feel a lot of people do not have common sense. And when you take that into the workplace, It's really hard for me to keep my mouth shut <laughs> because I'm like, it's just common sense. And it makes it really hard because I feel like people are just taking things and making it so much harder than it needs to be. And if you just had the basic common sense, it, your, your life would be a lot easier. So yeah. Right, let's leave to the universe, do its job now. It's the sense, the message is sent now. You send the message to the universe. Let's see, maybe something's gonna come out. <laughs> yeah, hopefully. <laughs> we're gonna remember you. Thank God he said that. Now we're gonna make up this cool subject so people can <laughs> work on it. <laughs> let's do another one, let's do it. Next question for you, Kevin. Right, if I would ask your best friend right now, To, decide, to define yourself in one positive word and one negative word, what your best friend would say. So it has to be one positive, one word, one negative word? Yeah. In your best friend's eyes. Um, I'd probably have to say vulnerability. It'd be negative. And then on a positive side, outgoing. Very good. And your best friend lives in Nebraska as well? Yes. How long do you know best friend for? Uh, I've known her for... at least a good 10 years, if that. So she knows you very well, for sure. Yes. <laughs> Three we, we, we usually we usually talk like every day. Amazing, very good. Yeah. What's her name? Um, well, her her real name is Daniel, but she's a drag queen, so she goes by Natasha. Natasha, and, and awesome. she she'll answer to anything. But she is like, she's also very energetic. She can make you smile and just like light up a room. Hmm. Natasha, you are officially invited for the magic box. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Three questions left for you. Okay, okay. let's do it. Next question is, what makes you the saddest? I would probably say... Losing people in your life would make me the saddest. Knowing that you used to have them in their life on a daily basis or at some regularity of time to where you can talk or text or hang out and then they're not in your life anymore and you can't really talk to them because they're not around. So it just kind of makes it hard to um, cope with that sometimes. And what, do, what makes you the happiest? What makes me the happiest other than lots of sunshine and hot weather because <laughs> I, I love the heat um just this is usually not like me because sometimes i am very selfish but like when i watch videos and you see like The soldiers coming home and meeting their families and they're running through the airport or you see a video of 
you know, somebody in a hospital and it's like a traumatic event and they like do a complete turnaround and they're able to get fully recovered. It just kind of brings a tear to my eye and just makes me so happy. It's the smallest little things. Like I could just watch videos all the time and just start crying. Oh, yeah. sweet. It's because you have a good heart. That's why. I try. <laughs> Two questions left. Let's do it. Okay. Next question for you is, if you could change something in yourself or about yourself, what that would be? I think one thing I would change about myself is I think I love too hard at times to the point where I let all those emotions take over and I let my walls down and then I end up getting hurt in the end. So I think if I tone it down and love from afar without having my walls come down, then I think I'll be fine. And you always had this way of approaching life or of being compassionate with people? Yes. Yeah, sometimes it can be a bit tricky, isn't it? Because you want to be there, you want to, yeah. you know, but sometimes it can, the other side can take a little bit of um, advantage of it, let's say this way, or, mm -hmm. you know, granted, so. Yeah, again, with time, we, we, we learn a bit and we start to protect ourselves better, in a better way. Yes. Last question, ready? Yes. Let's do it, last question. But before the last question, Kevin, people watch the interview, would you like to start a career um, in your field, the job you do right now? What would be your best piece of advice? I would say, if you were to go into my line of work in healthcare or healthcare in general. Have common sense, I'm joking. <laughs> yeah, have common sense. Also have the passion and the willingness to do this because healthcare is not for everybody, especially when you go through a national pandemic and you see things, you know, you see, you see the full turnaround, you see, you know, from stuff in labor and delivery where babies are born on up to you know where people are passing away so you see the full circle of life it's not for everybody it's it's very hard um and certain positions require different schooling or different training um i always say for me i'm not here for a paycheck that's just an added bonus the reason why i chose healthcare besides insurance would be really good, would be, I wanted to help regardless of what job I was doing. I wanted to make a difference in somebody's life. And seeing how, you know, you have your, your nursing staff that have been working the front lines for ever and, you know, dealing with a whole lot, they may be the frontline people but you also have, they have a whole lot of people behind them, backing them up in each department. And without each department, a hospital can't function. I used to work in EVS, which is environmental services. So I dealt with housekeeping and linen distribution for hospitals. And even with housekeeping, it was, Everybody thought, well, you're just a housekeeper, you know, bottom of the totem pole. But without the housekeeping staff, you know, keeping the hospital clean and sanitized, there would be way more infections, way more deaths. And it's just, just knowing that you would go in there and do your job and you're making a small difference in people's lives. Not to mention housekeeping staff and nursing staff, they are the, the only visitors some patients have. Um, because sometimes they don't have families to come visit. So when you go into a room and you're cleaning a room or you're checking on their vitals or whatnot, you might be the only person they see that day. And it's nice because it puts a smile on their face. My God, so beautiful what you said, uh, Kevin. It's so true, isn't it? It's so true. Sometimes they are literally 
alone and just to have those people around at least just have a company around imagine how much means to them how much their heart get comforted to have those people just doing their job but they are there by your side i think something interesting okay last question for you is who are who are you most thankful for and why i would have to say my close friends and family um because they have been with me through thick and thin even when i don't ask for it even if we don't agree on the topic at the time they're still there they've never closed the door they'll be like if you need help with anything just let us know we're here for you and my family and my close friends have always been there for me amazing like you yeah. <laughs> okay let's play now the word association game okay i'm going to give away some words just tell one word that comes to your mind quick thinking drink water to get ready yeah okay <laughs> so I hope you are enjoying the interview. Before we do the word association game, don't forget to give a like, don't forget to share this video, and also don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Just click on the bottom right there. Thank you so much and enjoy the word association game. Family. Love. How about money? Power. Love. Love would be... True love, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> Life. Fulfillment. How about sex? There's too many words to say. Um, lustful, pig, raunchy. I don't know. <laughs> There's lots of different words. You could go on and on. Yeah. Politics. I try and stay away from that. <laughs> <laughs> Religion. To each their own. Fear. Failure. Friendship. Mm. Two way street. Desire. Courage. Regret. Wastefulness. Success. Hard work. Wish. Fairy tale. Happiness. Joy. North Carolina. Good old Southern barbecue. <laughs> <laughs> Nebraska. Corn. <laughs> <laughs> I had someone on the show as well. I'm not sure if it was Nebraska or another state, and he said corn as well. Why? Why corn? Well, we are a corn state. I see. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> One word for healthcare. Willingness. And the last one now, USA. USA. Possibilities. Amazing. Let's pretend now I'm going to meet Natasha, your best friend, for a coffee. Okay. And I'm going to ask Natasha, tell me the most beautiful thing about Kevin and tell me something that he still needs to work on, to improve on. What's, what should she say? She would probably say about me is I'm very loving and outgoing personality and just kind of the life of the party at times. Something I would have to work on, she would probably say, he needs to not be so, um, persistent in certain situations or always backtracking to settle. Interesting. Yes. Some work in progress? Yes. Great. <laughs> Let's play now, Kevin, in the magic box, and you can ask me a question. But before that, let's play the music one more time. Let's do it. Okay. 
all the time when I see you taking this bottle photo, I'm like, my God, what is going to come now? I'm, I'm not on the spot. It's you nerves, ask... it's nerves. <laughs> <laughs> you can ask me a question now. Okay, uh, the question I have for you is, well, if you have a bucket list, what's something on your bucket list you would like to achieve? Good question, um, Kevin, good question. Right. Okay, when as soon as you mentioned about the um, the word bucket list, the first thing that came to my mind, like straight away, um, it's not even like a career or anything, but to visit Japan. Okay. It's um, it's a country that, um, for the little experience I have, I had with Japanese people through my work in the past, through some um, like traveling, and I had some, you know, I had some contact with Japanese culture or people, Japanese people, I just felt so fascinated. I just yeah. felt like, oh my God, they are so ahead. They are so ahead of us, you know, compared with the way they, are, they look at you, the way they uh, they approach you, the way they listen to you. And it's just something that I was like, wow, how come it, they can be like that, you know? And for me, I would love to, you know, to explore the country, to see bits and bits different Part, the modernity as well, like talk, you know what I mean? Like, uh, I think they are ahead somehow. I had all this impression. Um, and I don't know, it's just so interesting to see. I remember was with my mom a few years ago um, in France in Versailles Palace. We went for the day to visit the, the, the palace. And of course, those places, they're full of tourists, a lot of full of guides, uh, tourist guides, like with groups, yeah, different language different countries and i remember like there was this group from italy they were like the, the person in charge was like explain everything and of course the the, the, the voice it was explained very expressive like brazilian we talk with yeah. our hands you know what i mean the other part was like french or other nationality spanish and there was a group of uh japanese people and uh, the person in charge was literally talking like that look can you see this? Can you see that? The, you know, it was so beautiful to see the tone of her voice. It was literally, you could understand still, you know what I mean? And again, it's not wrong or right with the other. Uh, it's just a different culture, the way you express themselves. And I said, mom, look the difference of that group, that group, and this Japanese group. And she was like, oh my God, how they can do that? It was like, it's just the way they are. They were so calm, so silent, the group, you know what I mean? And you could understand everything the, the lady was saying for the group, you know what I mean? And everyone was like, oh yes, express themselves. The other group was like, everyone popped their hands, everyone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just felt beautiful, like, the, the, you know what I mean? The, the, the difference and the contrast between uh, personalities and uh, cultures as well, which is fascinating. That's what's fascinating. So, um, you know, I come from Brazil where we are very loud, where we talk a lot, like with our hands, you know, seeing that for me was like just, my God, how fascinating it is to, to, to be like this and how can you express yourself? You don't need to be loud, you don't need to be, you know, to be expressive. You can just, you know what I mean? Say, and it's just a cultural thing. Saying that as well, I remember I was working in a hotel and uh, when the Japanese people, they were arriving for the check-in or to be part of the hotel, my God, it was so beautiful. They were tired, long trip, but they were yeah. there. You could see their look in your eyes. They were there like, thank you for, I'm grateful, you know what I mean? Thankful for your job, for the way you were, you know, it was just beautiful and fascinating to see. And I was like, that's when I started to wonder and realize the difference. And I was like, oh my God. So yeah, top of my bucket list, one day is to go to Japan and spend some time there just to, you know what I mean? I'm sure I'll, I'll come back a different person, I'm sure, because I would learn a lot, you know. It'll be, it'll be a good learning experience. Absolutely. And I think I'll come back even a, a bit less louder. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be like this. Welcome to William at the Magic. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. I think, yeah. So the, but at least uh, the first thing I think I'd like to go, not for a week or two, because I think it's such a big country, Japan. Yeah. There's so much, I'd like to spend more than that, just to, you know what I mean? I had some people on the show talking about their, their experience in Japan, and it was just fascinating to, you know what I mean, to hear those experiences there. So yeah, Japan, for sure. Kevin, did you have a good time? I did. Thank you so much. Thanks so much. 
I know you're a bit hesitated, like uh, when we start uh, contacting each other, start talking to you, I was trying to encourage you and you're a bit hesitant about participating in the show. And I'm so glad you accept the invitation. I can see that, uh, yeah. you know, you have so much to, to share and to tell. And I'm glad we, he we had this moment right now. And yeah, uh, yeah sometimes, you know what I mean? Uh, go a little bit away of our comfort zone, or sometimes it's nice. You know what I mean? You feel good about that. Uh, I'm glad. I'm glad that you accept my invitation, and we had this moment today on Father's yeah. Day. Good. Yeah. Before you go, if you can share a positive message or a positive quote, something that inspires your life. Um, yes, I came up with something that I, I had saved in my phone, and it says, "Don't be afraid to start over. It's a chance to build something better this time." So for me, I, I chose that because with a lot of things that's happened over the last couple of years, it's hard to start something new. And it, especially if you're by yourself. Um, so for me, it's don't be afraid to do it because you know you're going to have your close friends and your family in your corner to back you up and be there to support you. So whatever it is you're going to do that you're starting fresh, just go full force with the willingness and the hard work and you can achieve it. Absolutely. And some, I, sometimes it's not easy, for sure. It's not easy. But in the end of the day, it's down to us to wake up every day with this yes. mindset of, well, you know what? It's not easy, but let's do it. Let's go through it. Let's try, you know? So that's what makes life interesting and uh, fascinating at the same time as well. Yes. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure connecting with you. Thanks so much. Enjoy your yes. weekend. Enjoy Anytime. Your weekend, okay. Yes. Take care. Bye. Have a good day. Yeah. Bye. So, did you like the show? Don't forget to give a like, to share it, and also don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And if you'd like to be part of the show as well, first subscribe to our channel, and after that, just go to our website www.williamandthemagicbox.com and send us a request saying why would you like to be part of the show and I see you there. Bye-bye, see you next time.